Today on Dr. Phil. My son put a cigarette out on the back of a student's neck. Her son is a bully. I pick on kids because it makes me feel better. Where do you think he gets this? But it's the mother's behavior. The school said you too are a bully. That has Dr. Phil concerned. You were asleep when the crew arrived. You refused to finish the pre-interview. You told one of our staffers, if you don't shut up, I will have your ass. Do you deal with the school this way? If we're going to intervene in this situation, you're going to have to clean your act up as well. Plus. Yesterday, we were talking with Tamika Rashawn, who is a self-described bully. I'm also a better mother. I mean, children, do what you say. Hold on. You're not going to abuse her. You're going to talk to me. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are we ready in the booth? Okay. Let's do it. All right, this kid looks like the typical all-American, well-adjusted, happy boy, right? But his mother, Nancy, says, don't let this cute face fool you. Take a look. My 13-year-old son, Nick, may seem like a sweet, innocent little boy, but he's an out-of-control bully. He can go you. Nick used to be bullied by kids. Now the tables have turned, and Nick is the bully. I never ever thought that I would bring a bully into this world. School can go s- Nick bullies kids that look vulnerable. He uses verbal abuse, you know, threats, and boy. physical abuse. Nick has been suspended six times in the past few months. On February 15th, my son put a cigarette out on the back of a student's neck. I was appalled and I thought what could possess my son to do that I had to plead with the student's parents not to press charges I'm scared to death I'm afraid that if my 13 year old son doesn't get help soon that he will end up dead well Nancy must be exaggerating right she couldn't be describing the cute kid that we just saw or maybe she has a valid reason to be scared take a look I'm a bully. I pick on kids because it makes me feel better, bigger, stronger. The power in bullying feels great because all through elementary, I was bullied. My reputation in school is being a badass, doing what I want, not giving a crap about what any adult says. I've been suspended from school six times in the last two months. I put a cigarette out on my friend's neck for and giggles. I shoved a kid into a locker and called him a f- There was a kid in the ninth grade. He called my girlfriend a skanky whore. The next day, we got into a fight at lunch, and I got suspended for five days for beating him up. I'm small, but I can pack a punch. I was going to work period, and I was a minute late, and my teacher said, go to the principal's office. I said, you dirty bitch, don't kick me out if I'm a minute late. And then I went to the office. The people in the office know me pretty pretty well because I'm always there. My mom and I get into an argument at least once a day. Where are you going to be in 10 years? Because I am dying to know. I'm dying to know why he keeps on suspending me and not letting me do work and then you guys give me We can't even have a civil conversation because you're always trying to complain about something. You're giving me because I won't do my homework that I don't know because he suspends me. I want Dr. Phil to uh, help me stop bullying. I do it because it makes me feel better than everyone else around me. It makes me feel like the tough guy. It's hard to quit bullying when you were bullied for six years straight and all of a sudden you're the bully and you feel better. Well, today we're talking about bullies. Now, yesterday we did a show featuring what I think everybody would say was a jaw-dropping bully named Tamika Rashan. That show ran long. So we're continuing the topic today with Nancy and her son, Nick, who is joining us via satellite, uh, as well as Tamika Rashan, who is here. Uh, Kelly Catrone is with us, as well as is Max Adler uh, from the hit show Glee. As you know, he plays a bully on that show, which is uh, a great, great acting job because he's anything but. So we're going to just kind of have a roundtable conversation here about all of this. Um, so, Nick, when you aggress against another another kid, 
do you ever wonder or worry about how it affects them or makes them feel? No, I do not feel that way. I do not think if it hurts them or in mentally or physically, I really don't care. Okay, you, you recently put out a cigarette on a young boy's neck. Yes, I have. And eagles. I'm sorry? For fun, for like just funny reasons. Uh-huh. And um, did you wonder if he was in pain or if it hurt him in any way? No. Um, did you ever apologize to him for that? Yeah, I said sorry after he told the principal and I got suspended. Okay, but you were sorry you got caught. You weren't sorry that you did it. Yeah. So, Nick, you were bullied through the sixth grade, correct? Yeah, from grade one to grade six. And in the seventh grade, you said, hey, I got a new start. I'm taking over. Now I'm going to be the bully. Yeah. A representative from St. George Simpson Middle School in Alberta, Canada, sent us this statement. Here is the shortened version. We've seen a deterioration in Nick's behavior. He is a troubled kid. He is very disrespectful to teachers. He's out of control. We're afraid he will not make it in high school. We also believe his manipulation is hereditary. His mother is a bully, too. We'll talk about that after the break. He has a problem. He has a problem, but you I'm don't. I'm 26 years old. It's completely different. I'll Which take means, out yes, nine. it is different. You should know better. <laughs> Coming up, you were asleep when the crew arrived, and Astra Austin, the producer for this show, gave you the exact precise time to be ready. 9 a.m. You told Nick, if you don't shut the f up, I will have your ass. First time ever on Dr. Phil. The triple drug intervention. Get away from me. Let me. We love you. Don't touch me. We're here to help. Every intervention starts out with a subject trying to run. You have one chance to say yes or you say no. Or you have a gun. Call that. I don't want you to die. This whole family's falling apart. Then on Thursday. My sons refuse to move out. They say they're adult twins. You gave them an eviction notice. They won't go. Are big time moochers. This is elder abuse. That's Thursday. Oh, I also got into a fight right there. In February, I was in the youth center, and I had a knife in my pocket that I stole from my stepdad, and I flipped it open, and then one of the youth workers caught me, and he said, give me the knife, and I said, I'll stab you if you don't leave me the alone, and I kept on threatening him like this, and then I walked out the door backwards. It's not really tough to be the tough guy, because everyone bows down to you. I was hanging with my friend yesterday. I punched him in the arm, and my knuckle hit the wall. My broken knuckle doesn't hurt. Makes me feel empowered when I push a little kid, a smaller kid than me. I would never hurt like a kindergarten or like grade one or two. Well, that was 13-year-old Nick who talks about how empowered he feels after he bullies other students. Now, yesterday we were talking with Tamika Rashan, who is an adult. And she is a self-described bully and says she is proud of it. I love being a bully because I have the power and I'm going to get the respect whether you give it to me or I take it from you. I hate the handicap. I don't know why they get parking in the front. I need to get in and get out. I need that handicap parking spot. That's why I always take it and I will continue to take handicap parking spots because they don't need it. What the f What is your strategy to get where you want in life? What's success for you? Um... Raising a happy, healthy daughter. Finishing school, really. What are you studying? Television radio broadcasting. Television radio broadcasting. I communicate well, obviously, because you all know how I feel, and I don't care how you feel. Again, he's talking to me. Let's cut it. <clears throat> okay, I tell you what. Kelly Catrone is a special contributor to the show. I sent Kelly to visit Tamika Rashan. You're a self-described bully. I take what I want and I do what I want. Who do you take it from? Whomever I want. You don't like fat people? No, I don't like morbidly obese people. If I go out in something sexy or like a short shirt, like I get the stares and the looks. But if a fat person comes out with a short shirt on, no one says anything. Do you say mean things to fat people? Yes. Baby, you shouldn't Some be it. eating that whole bag of chips there you have, you know? Yeah, you're the bad 
lose weight. Step away from the donut. I'm sorry. Can we get a waitress? Yeah, a waiter or something. I'm going to apologize in advance for anything that might be said here. I just want to say that. What do you think I was going to say? Are you Asian? You're Asian. So I'm going to call you Asian lady. Is that okay? Asian lady. Let's get this order done. We're going to add somebody to the conversation next. What is your problem? You talking back to me? You want a piece of the fury? The fury? That's what I named my fist. Now that was actor Max Adler from the hit show Glee, who plays school bully Dave. First of all, you're playing a bully, but then you don't want people to bully. Like, I would not play a bully because you're promoting bullies is what you're doing. Why don't you take a stand? No, Why don't you take a stand? And, like, say, I refuse to, like, play this character just because I'm so anti-bullies. But you're playing the character. Max, you've been watching the show so far mm -hmm. from, from backstage. What's your gut-level reaction to Tamika Rashawn? Gut-level A, I'll say you don't and look you different. Know you look beautiful. Everything you're about lovely. me already. I don't, know every, I don't know anything about you, but from okay. the 10 seconds I've seen on the show. You do seem very intelligent. And when Dr. Phil asked you about your daughter, it was a whole new woman that I saw. Let me stop here. I, I want to point out something because I'm really wanting you to have some takeaway from this show. Okay. When Max started talking, I said, what, what is your take on her? You immediately get him before he get. No, wait, let me finish. No, I'm talking here. That's, see that name up there? I do. That's me. Okay. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I asked him that... In a get them before they get me, you said, you don't know anything about me, and you da 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 And then, when I made you stop and let him finish, what he actually said was that he has the sensitivity to look past all of the bluster, and in fact saw an intelligent and caring woman when it came to your daughter, and it came to doing what you needed to do to protect her. I understand what you're saying. As you look at this story. I'm also a better mother. I mean, children... Okay, wait a minute. I didn't ask you to take her in, Children, Victoria. do uh, what on. you say. Hold on. No, you're not going to abuse. Just asking friend. you, as you watch this young man, do you see the fallacy of his behavior? Yes, but that is completely not me. He has a problem, but it starts at home. Okay. He's a child. He I'm has a problem. Years old. He has a problem, but you I'm don't. I'm 26 years old. It's completely different. I don't Which take means, out yes, it is different. You should know better. <laughs> He's a child. He's a child. You should know better. You've had 13 more years to figure this out. Do you think this behavior is in his best interest for him no. to behave that way? No. I'm just asking you. Be honest. I mean, as a mother, if he would have did that to my kid, the last thing she would have to worry about is me pressing charges. Yeah. Yeah, because you're Betty Badass, and that's what works well, for you, right? I mean, come on, lady, grow up. Well. Okay. Now, you, Nancy, where do you think he gets this? The school said you too are a bully. Are you modeling the wrong behavior for your son? I'd like to know how I've been a bully, because as far as I know, I haven't been. But well, you can I, ask the school about that, but let me tell you what our experience of you has been. Okay. Uh, on Thursday at 10 a.m., you were talking to one of our staffers, mm -hmm. also named Nick. Um, he asked you to make a list of things needed for the show after you forgot assignments. You yelled at him and hung up, and then you called back one minute later to apologize. Now, you have begged us to have you on the show and provide help to you and your son to help this family. Mm -hmm. You said, please, please don't pick another story. Pick our story. We need the help, right? Mm -hmm. And so we say, okay, mm -hmm. we get it. Because, frankly, I, I think your son is, a, I think he can be a delightful young man. I think he has leadership potential and quality. And I think he can do a great job. He just needs to be redirected. But I'll get to you in a minute, uh, Nick. Um, and and but for him, I, but for him, I would have fired you as a guest right there when you hung up on my staff member. But for him, I did it. 4 p.m. You hung up on Nick and said you couldn't talk. 7 p.m. Refused to finish the pre-interview with Nick. Friday, uh, the next day, you were asleep when the crew arrived and asked for Austin. The producer for this show gave you the exact precise time to be ready. 9 a.m., you told Nick, if you don't shut the f*** up, 
I will have your ass. <laughs> I'm not going to deny any of that. Okay, so maybe that's a clue as to why the school might think you're a bully. Probably. You said, I don't know. Do you, do, do you deal with the school this way? No. Now, I want to be clear that when I'm talking about Nick, your son, we just have have a staff member by the name of Nick. This is Nick. I know. I, uh, I met him. Over here. And Nick, you've, uh, thank you for your hazardous duty um, <laughs> in, right. in working with Nancy. Uh, but did you find it odd that she wanted the help so bad and then became so difficult to deal with as soon as you made the commitment? Well, it definitely made it painful. Um, you know, she was desperate and uh, I respected that. And uh, I, uh, you know, I'm back here tearing up looking at Nick. And uh, I wanted to help him, and uh, I see myself in him, and uh, you know I I I put up with it with her because I wanted to help Nick. If we're going to intervene in this situation, mm -hmm. you're going to have to clean your act up as well. Absolutely. This is this is not the way to deal Absolutely. with somebody. And Absolutely. if you're going to deal with us, we won't put up with it. Good, good. We we, we won't put up with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Nick, I, I've got some things that I, I want to say to you. Uh, yeah. We're going to take a break. I'm going to come back and put some verbs in my sentences the, about things that I think you can and need to do. Uh, so, and, and we're going to find out, d does Nancy want me to run in and rescue her son, or is she willing to help and be part of the solution instead of part of the problem? We'll be right back. felt that feeling before of being bigger than someone better than them and it just feels great and I it's like an addiction that's what I think it is I'm addicted to bullying and I need help and later I don't bully children okay but you can bully adults and handicapped people and people with down syndrome this that's these, okay these two situations are completely Different. No, they're not. If you can't accept More someone than... treating your child yeah. like that, you shouldn't treat handicapped people and people with disabilities like that. We're talking about adults and teens who admit to bullying. Uh, I've got a lot of help here. Kelly Catrone is here. Max Adler is here. Um, we're, we're talking about what's going on with bullies, kind of the anatomy of a bully. Um, Nick, here's the thing I want you to understand. You want to have personal power in your life, but you can be either a, a, a good person with that power or you can be someone that uses strength and, and power and personality in a way that hurts other people. And, and I'll promise you it comes to a bad end. And the truth is that if you get in a power struggle with adults, you're going to lose. Uh, because we have the power to take you out of the game. We have the power to put you in juvenile hall. We have the power to put you in jail. So that's a, you, you, as you grow up in life, you learn to not pick battles that you can't win. Yeah. And this is a battle you can't win it, with well, the strategy that you have now. So what I want to do is ask you if you would like to learn, if you would like to learn to truly be a leader, to be a protector, to be a facilitator, to be somebody that helps instead of being a problem. Yeah, I want to learn how to be a leader, not a follower. I want to be nice to people. It's just I never felt that feeling before of being bigger than someone, better than them, and it just what I think it is. I'm addicted to bullying and I need help. Okay, well, I, and I'm going to offer you that help. <laughs> and um, and I, I can promise you there's always somebody bigger. There's always somebody stronger. There's always somebody you're going to meet that's going to whoop your ass. <laughs> and you're a lot better off if you just decide that you don't want to go down that road. I'm going to get you help right there in your community. I'm going to get you a professional that's going to help you and work with you. So, so Nick, I'm going to I'm going to arrange this, and I'm going to I'm going to ask you right now if you're going to participate in it and do the things that we ask you to do. Yes, I will. 
Okay, I believe you. I, I take you at your word. We're going to get started on that right away. Thank All you right. very much. When we come back, parents of a victim that has some strong words for both Tamika and Nick and Nancy. All when we come right back. You can feel okay to bully and make fun of people. You humiliate people and put them down constantly. If it's someone were doing that different. to your child in front of you, would that be acceptable to you? And later... I did not put the dog on the porch. You purposely left it, the, you no, purposely that was left not the dog my outside. Dog. You left that was it not outside. my dog. I would never, like, hurt animals. I have animals. I love animals. I babysit animals. I, I have two dogs. I would... No, never. Now, Ross and his wife, Lindy, say that they also have words for the guest on my show after bullying hit home for them in the form of a controversial wrestling move called the butt drag. Take a look. A Buchanan High School wrestler will head to court tomorrow. He's being accused of sexual assault against a teammate. It's been headlines for the last few months. A high are accused of taking a wrestling move too far. It's called the butt drag. The butt drag is where you grab the biggest part of his rear end or buttocks and you stir it one way or the other to get control, to get behind him. A Buchanan high schooler is being accused of going too far. A teammate alleges he inserted his fingers into his backside. It sends a strong message, not just here, but, um, you know, I think across the country that bullying isn't going to be tolerated in any form or fashion. Okay, Ross and Lindy, if y'all would stand up. Um, the, tell me your son's reaction when this took place. You know, it, it was uh, a reaction in a negative way. I mean, he came home 100% humiliated, ashamed, scared to tell us that uh, this had happened. Fortunately, the uh, perpetrator in this case was uh, expelled from school. Um, and, you know, my son's been at school. He's just been vilified by his classmates. Um, he walks home from school. He's taunted constantly by people. And, um, you know, I think the good thing about this and, and in a lot of these stories is that he has four parents that stood behind him 100%, never wavered one bit. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people get intimidated to stand up and, and speak out on this. And I also believe that... The bullying starts at home. They learn things from the parents, and I think if the parents are not, um, if the parents aren't willing to step up and get a grip on their child at a young age, it is out of control by the time they hit, you know, upper high school level. Talk about your website for these kids that are being bullied. Again, tell us the name of the website, Max. Uh, ItGetsBetter.org. ItGetsBetter.org. And what are they going to find? It's really, I mean, exactly what they're saying. It's a support system. It's when they can't get support from parents, friends, family. They go to this website and find that there's a whole community and the whole world basically gets together on this website to show their support, build self-esteem, build ego. And I agree 100% that it does start at home and it starts with parents. I know that I was bullied like in, in fifth grade when I started at a new school district. And I was an open line of communication with my parents who encouraged me to talk about it with them, talk about it with teachers. And I, and I knew that it wasn't me and that there's no need for me to fight back because there's obviously something wrong with the person doing the bullying. And it starts with your own ego and, and self-esteem, I feel like, to, yes. to know that you, know, you don't well, want to get were, to you. Y'all were fortunate because what Max is talking about is that he had this dialogue with his parents. And oftentimes the victim doesn't come home and tell their parents because they're right. ashamed. They're yeah. embarrassed. They, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And, but, but your son did come home and, and talk to you about this. But the bullying didn't stop there. And, and at some point, the, the parent has to step up and, and, and say, this isn't just kids being kids. Yes. I've, I've got to support here. Uh, Kelly, as a single mother, what do you say to your daughter? What, what, what do you say about bullies? I mean, do you talk about this proactively? I do. I always, since Ava 
you know, from the time she was two, I think any chance that I have to put something good into her head is like a bank deposit. So I always tell her, you know, daughters always tell their mommies everything. We never keep secrets. We never keep secrets. And then every day I ask her, you know, how was your day today? And if I notice something odd about it, I, I go, are you sure you had a good day today? You seem a little down. Like we really, we have family meeting twice a week at my house. Yeah, and, and as, as corny as that sounds, that really is something you have to do is to have that dialogue that's out there. And, you know, you guys have listened to Nick talk on satellite about, you know, burning a, a child with a cigarette and victimizing his kids. And I asked him, did you ever think what they feel? Uh, and he said, no, I don't. What do they feel? What, what did your son feel? What, what did Nick not get? I think Nick, you know, has been on both sides of the fence. He was bullied and now he's a bully. And Nick, my question to you is, you didn't like being bullied, did you? No. It, it, was, it was, you would come home, did you have an outlet to talk to mom and dad about this? Did you have the support? I had the support, but I just didn't take it. I was just too humiliated to. Well, imagine when you put that cigarette on that young man's ear. You probably not only hurt him, you humiliated him. You know, I mean, it's not what you uh, think is for kicks and giggles. But you were there just a few years ago. Uh, to me, Rashawn, would that be offensive to you if someone did something like this to your daughter? <clears throat> I think my daughter would probably be with my mom because if someone did something like that to my daughter. <sighs> I don't see how you can feel okay to bully and make fun of people the fact that you humiliate people and put them down constantly if it's someone were doing that different. to your child if someone were doing that to your child in front of you would that be acceptable to you would that be acceptable to you my parenting uh, is uh, obviously could you answer that my question? parenting is obviously different because i go to my child's school and i'm you verbal, still want to answer the there. question no it would not be acceptable but it's okay for you to do it to others i don't bully children Okay, but you can bully adults and handicapped people and people with Down syndrome. This, That's these, okay. These two situations are completely different. No, they're not. Completely honey. different. And you know what? Furthermore, if you can't accept someone treating child like that, you shouldn't treat handicapped people and people with disabilities like that. You were doing something also. First of all, I wouldn't even let my child play a sport like that for that. To well, even be put in that situation. To even uh, be put in that situation. Well, good for you. Okay, I hope so good for me. Good is for it me. the same or is it different? We'll it talk different. about that after the break. It's the same. I just wanted to take a minute to talk to anybody out there in elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and even colleges that are being bullied or have ever been bullied. I keep hearing the same scary thing over and over again, and it's that you feel you deserve to be bullied and that you have it coming to you and that there's nothing that you can do to stop it or change it. It's not true. You do not deserve to be bullied at all check out itgetsbetter.org, you'll see that there's an entire world out there that's ready just to talk to you and accept you for exactly who you are. Well, we're back and we're talking about bullying today. And uh, you guys know that we have spent so much of the nine years on the Dr. Phil show talking about bullying and, and trying to raise awareness about this. It happens in all levels. It, it, it happens with children, it, it happens with adults, it happens in the workplace, it happens in sports, it happens everywhere. And one thing, uh, Tamika Rashan, that is a common denominator is the pain that the victim feels whenever it happens. And, you know, Kirk, you were saying, and you, you were kind enough to role play for us. Um, in in the wheelchair in the green room, even knowing it was a role play, it still was very uncomfortable to it be mistreated tough. in such I a mean, bad I mean, I had never been bullied in my life, but in that situation, I really could see what it feels like. The way she got in the girls' faces, and it was like, you know, I wanted to do something. It, it was a tough. It was a tough room. I want to show you what happened before the show today. When she came into our green room, 
and encountered a person in a wheelchair. Now notice how far away she sits from him once she spots him. Take a look at it. I'm like, to Congress? Yeah. And so the petition is going and there's I'm gonna have five spots. Oh, Hi. Wow. Hello, how are you all? Good. Hey. Hey, hey Tamika Rashawn. Topanga? Excuse me, I said Tamika Rashawn. Tamika. Tamika. Tia. Yeah. Oh, Tia. Really simple and at the oh, don't so fall. You can't um no, trust me, I am I'm well balanced. Uh, You're well balanced. Yeah. Nice. So that's what Congress is going to do. They're going to maybe put five parking spots in front of every building in the country because... Of you the, need five parking spots? No, but handicaps do. Aren't you handicapped? I am. And you need five parking spots? Sometimes they're going to be filled up. Like where? There's in more front than of one every handicapped building. person. I'm sorry, I wasn't talking to you. What do you have against handicaps? I don't want to see you, is the thing. Like, why, look away. why should I suffer... You because suffering? you're like, I don't want to see this. Are you suffering this, because like, I'm handicapped? I really don't want to see it. It does bother me. Uh, I, I feel like I'm see you right now because I'm talking to you. Well, why don't stop. you, why don't stop. you come Why don't you shut up because I wasn't talking to you, okay? You're talking like, to the It's the second room. time. It's the second time I just said I wasn't talking to you. So seriously? Okay, fine. Talk this to is, them. Let me talk oh, to yeah. them. Okay, seriously? You know my freaking name? Who and if you're not going to call me Tamika Rashawn, then don't call me anything at all. Please stand up, boo. It is Tamika Rashawn. P E M I C A R O S H A W N. Okay? And I've told you this five times now. Okay? Really? Yeah. All right. Okay. Really. Um. The, the man in the wheelchair, Kirk, let me, let me have Kirk join us if he would. This is Kirk Fox. <laughs> Kirk, how you doing? Good, Phil. Good nice to, see to see you. See you. Now, you, you find him disgusting this is the thing okay I because he has chosen to put himself in a wheelchair when I see it I'm uncomfortable it makes me feel bad like I, I hate it I don't want to look at you why and I'm do sure you I'm judge, not the only person that feels this way why do you judge him just because he's in the chair no I'm not no I'm not no I'm not to make it Rashawn answer my question why do you judge him just because he's in the chair I don't like having to see it would you go over and introduce yourself to her? And I will say, there were a couple times where she actually laughed. And she looked like a completely different person where I thought that she was pretending to be a bully. Like, there is something in this girl that is so sweet. But it's, it's, she's fighting it, and it, it was tough to see. Yeah. And then, then I see Nick on TV, and, and I tear up because he's all heart, you know? And he's got to think about the kid who he burned because now that kid might grow up to be a bully. I mean, it's a vicious chain, and you got to just stop it. I mean, you're too smart and sweet. You don't need to be a bully. Thank you. Charlie, you've known Tamika Rashawn for how long? I would say about nine years. About nine years? Yes, sir. Has she bullied you? Yes, she has. Mm -hmm. How so? At her house one time, we were watching a movie. I happened to doze off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I felt her messing with my hair. I didn't think anything about it. I woke up and she had tied my hair in a million knots. Do not leave your pets around her. Um, her sister had a little teacup dog. We were watching a movie, and the dog simply was trying to get on the couch with us. She picked that dog up. You know they're all head. She picked that dog up and dropped it on the hardwood. I was so mad about this. There was no, no call for it. I was mad about this. I took the dog and just went on the porch. I didn't even want to be around her. Mm -hmm. um, another time, I had and uh, I was holding the dog, and the dog just started yelling just uncontrollably, and I'm, what's going on? I looked back, and she's got his back paw squeezing it and digging her nail into his, his foot. Ah. I actually had to rip the dog away. And the look on her face was, I can't explain it. I can't explain it, Dr. Phil. So, to me, Rashawn, tell me, why would you do that? I don't recall dropping a dog. The dog fell. <laughs> oh. I have dogs. I have two dogs. I love my dogs. 
Did you I hurt his other dog? My dog. I did not. I don't recall dropping the well, dog. But his, but his other pup. That he said you were squeezing the back paw and making it cry and yelp. Did you remember that? I was playing with the puppy. I don't recall. You like, don't believe that? No, Danielle. I don't. Typical answer. She was playing with it. <laughs> I have a puppy. I have no. dogs. Dr. Yeah. Phil. I've never. The seen. same teacup dog. In their neighborhood, I, I told her, you know, if you let the dog out at night, there are possums and raccoons out here, you know, stay there with it, let it back in. Tell me why one morning I come over there and the dog is on the porch with his throat ripped out. I finally asked her, you know, um, I felt like she did it on purpose and she admitted it. All she said was the trash bags were under the sink. Oh yeah. Is that a true story? I did not intentionally leave the dog on the porch. The dog was not my dog. It was my sister's dog. She's responsible for her own dog. So she should have brought her dog in. I did not put the dog on the porch. You purposely left it. it you no, purposely that left the dog, dog outside. You left the dog outside. That was not my outside. dog. Okay. That was not my dog. My sister left her dog outside. I wasn't responsible for her for her animal. That was not my dog. I did not put the dog outside. I did not bring the dog inside. I would never like hurt animals. I have animals. I love animals. I've had I babysit animals. I, I have two dogs. I would, no, never. Never. I strongly believe that when people show rage and anger, they think that's a powerful posture to be in. But in fact, it's the weakest time you'll ever have in your life when you're angry and enraged because that means that you have declared yourself a victim in some way and you're raging against whatever it is that that is hurting you that that is a very that's the weakest you'll ever be the strongest that you will ever be is when you are in control when you are making rational and compassionate decisions that's when you're in control and when I see people that are showing anger and you are in my view, a very angry person. I mean, you, you are hair-trigger angry person. You, you have to take anger off the table and understand that it's nothing more than just a symptom of hurt, fear, and frustration. When people are showing anger, they're hurt, or they're scared, or they're frustrated. you the times in your life that you've been hurt and you said well you know I, I have been hurt and let me tell you that I do have empathy and I am very sorry that those things happened to you I, I really am you didn't deserve that you didn't ask for it I, I really am I'm, I'm very sorry for that and I think you're damaged and I think it's caused you 
to be like you got a really bad sunburn and anybody even brushes up against you and you have a big reaction to it. And you're not ever going to change that until you heal what has you so not at peace. But I would love you to be able to walk into a room and not feel like you have to be the center of attention, not feel like you have to strut and parade, not feel like you have to dominate, but just feel like you could just come into the room and be accepted for who you are. Not how you look or what you're wearing, but who you are in your heart. I, I would... I would... I would, I would want that peace for you, and I would want for you to model for your daughter that powerful and peaceful woman. Uh, that would be such a gift. That would be such a gift to her. And I, I think you, you need help with that. And, and I'm, as I said with, with Nick and with Nancy, I'm very happy to arrange that help for you, someone that you could sit down with and this is this is our gift to you. This won't cost anything. It's just that we'll make the help that I'm offering. Yes. Yeah. I, I want that for you because I, I think you deserve it. Thank you. I really do. We'll be right back. I want to thank all of my guests today, and especially I want to thank uh, all the people that have really helped us put this on. Uh, I want you to check out comedian and actor Kurt Fox on Comedy Central's John Oliver's New York stand-up show. It's John Oliver's New York stand-up show. He also stars as Joe on NBC's Parks and Recreation which airs Thursday nights at 9.30. So, Kirk, thanks for all your help. Um, he's also got a killer topspin backhand that he guns at me every time I look. Dave Karofsky on the hit show Glee, which airs Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. on Fox, as though anybody doesn't know that. Uh, so, listen, thanks for the work you do on that show, and thanks for the work that you do off the show with the, with the bullying. It gets better, Don. Thank you. Um, and we're going we're gonna to put a link on our website to your website so people can find it and know the resources that are there. That's, that's great Thank that you, you're yeah. doing that, Max. Thank, Thank you. you. Also, thanks to CEO and founder of People's Revolution, Kelly Catrone. Thank you for working with uh, Tanika Rashawn. Now... You need to go out and buy her latest book that just hit bookshelves. Normal gets you nowhere. Thanks for being here. So long.